Welcome back to the Tough Love Podcast with Dr. John O'Connor. Today's podcast is sponsored by Medray Laser and Technology. Matt, what's going on, brother? Let's get started. Doug, good to be back. So let's dive right in. Back from Las Vegas, Parker Seminar. Tell our listeners what it was like, what you learned from it, what made you even go out there for it? So Parker 2024 Invictus was absolutely amazing. Um, the reason for me being out there was to bring Dr. John O'Connor, Velocity <clears throat> HP coaching to represent, uh, Medray laser and technology and e AJ and Josh and the team were absolutely amazing in really centering the entire booth around myself and how we portray, how we treat with, how we advertise, how we how we put that product out there. And I have to say, I felt extremely um, appreciated and, you know, a ton of pride in like, you know, like if you're playing for the Yankees or somebody like that, like I wanted to show, you know what I mean? Like I definitely wanted to show up for them. It's the big stage. And, yeah. And I wanted to be on point. And uh, <clears throat> I have to say like, you know, you know, because we, we worked on the schedule together um, and I'm always an over deliver guy. Right. And I think I had two 30 minute blocks and I probably spent eight hours there between, if not 10 to 12 right. between the two days. And the one thing that I would say to anybody starting a new business that is based on intellectual property or teaching a concept, you have to put yourself out there. And it was amazing because I'll, I'll get into another side shoot of where, where we're going down in Fort Lauderdale for another coaching opportunity. You have to be relatable to people from all walks of life, all parts of the country, from the nooks of Kentucky to the hills of, you know, Colorado to, you know, to the sun, the beach of, of California to, you know, to the how you doing, New Jersey, New York people. And switching personalities and, and switching modes was something that like the first day was a little bit of a challenge and like exhausting. And then the, the second day I had the opportunity to hear David Goggins and hear him speak and be so genuine. And probably the epiphany that I had with him is that David Goggins uses the word fuck as a noun, pronoun, adjective, <laughs> you know, <Heard> and, that. <laughs> and, uh, and he is real AF, right? Yeah. And so one of the things that, and I've read, you know, his books, I love listening to him when I ever catch him on a podcast. And, you know, what I love about him from being a coach is that <clears throat> his following comes from the fact that his whole creed, like his whole motto is don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. when you're done. And the other thing that I thought was really intriguing and it brought me back to being at Monmouth University probably eight to 10 years ago and I had to speak in front of maybe 2,500 to 3,500 kids from New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania and I was terrified. And here I am looking at David Coggins as he says, self-proclaimed hardest man in the world. Uh, and he hates speaking to people. He hates being up in these big groups. Right. And I think actually a, a couple years ago, he actually took himself off that speaking circuit for that reason. And, you know, the one thing about it was he said, because people don't want to hear about him studying or whatever he's doing right now that's six hours worth of misery and it's going to be like who's turning the page for that they want Nobody. to hear what makes them better what makes them money and makes yes. them succeed and they want to hear why he's so hard and why he's so tough and that motivation that he has you know and i think all of us in lesser degrees you know have that in them and you know for myself i looked at it like when I get out there to coach and teach, I had two modes, right? One was presenting to, you know, a decent sized group. And then the individual component, I found myself 
enjoying the individual component, which I normally don't like, and showing compassion, showing an understanding. A couple of times, you know, people are looking at us and, you know, and, you know, when I'm at seminars, you know, I'm a watch guy, I'm a, a shoes, clothing guy. And the people, I think they're measuring you, right? Especially if, depending on where they come from in the country. And I'll lead with the realness to say, you know, guys, I remember being at Parker 15 or 20 years ago and my kids were babies and we were on our ass and I was training all the time. I was well-received. Parents were sucking the life out of me, training their kids and we were essentially broke. And I was there watching these remarkably successful people that couldn't outwork me. And I'm saying to myself, I'm just not focused. I got to refocus on what matters and not focus on, you know, something that might be old that I got to like, like an old hurt that I want to like replay and reset right. and redo. You have to evolve. And when I was there, fast forward now in 2024, and, you know, you know, one of the key, uh, the director of national sales said, uh, you know, Dr. Connor, we would love for you to be in our circle of tables next year. I was sitting there and that just resonated and like hit that. I'm like, you know, obviously I can't have you guys out me on every trip as much as I would love to. I was like, wow, you know, we just started this business and yes, you know, we're not looking at the balance sheet saying we got all kinds of zeros and we're rolling in it. But when you see national sales guys that came from, you know, massive distribution companies and taking over, you know, companies that do a hundred million dollars in sales a year or whatever the number was, but it was extraordinary. Um, and saying, we want you to be part of our team. Right. You know what you're doing and the message you're delivering is relevant. That's enough to hear right there. And so I think that was a great thing. The other thing we hadn't met, right? We've been on Zooms. We were prepping. Yeah. Um, we had a ton of like whiteboard chalk time, if you will, right. for prepping to be with MedRay um, Laser and Technology. But, and you know, I loved how hardcore AJ was, right? As you know, you know, yeah. we're sitting on those Zooms in the first Tough two love. minutes. The first two minutes, you know, AJ, you felt all the attorney in him. And I was like, wow, you know, I was a little guarded at first. And I think he was setting the tone like, hey, listen, don't mistake my kindness for for weakness. And to me, that's how you know he respects you and, you know, Velocity HP coaching representing them. Well, that was it. And, you know, there were a couple moments where I caught the team, you know, the Medray team kind of watching me in action. And it, it felt like a sporting event. I spun around, they walked off and we were high fiving more so that what I loved, and it was very similar to a recent podcast we did talking about the community. Yeah that they loved how we touched the pain points with these practitioners. And one woman came to mind and a uh, really cute lady, you know, as far as just her demeanor and what she does, pediatric practice up in New York state, you know, pretty good volume, successful practitioner. And I, she was staring at the laser, you know, <laughs> like it did her wrong. And I looked at it, I was like, oh, do you have one of those? And she's like, yeah. Oh, okay. Is it broken? No. It's collecting okay. dust. And uh, I was like, okay. Um, What's up? I'm not a mind reader, <laughs> but you know, I'm like, but I'm guessing you're not having the success I'm having. Why don't we talk? Right. And she's like, and then literally like <clears throat> she just poured it on me. You know, she was upset. Right. And I related to a story that, that I'm going to put on social uh, and I told her, I, I, you know, I shared what a story about my son Yeah. in talking about Johnny, I was saying we've watched him so many times and I've watched him probably as much out of the eyes of doc as I've watched him out of the eyes of dad. And one of the things that I felt like in so many people is that she needed to find her superpower and that. I said, I was like, you know, it's amazing by just handing somebody a wand or some type of a, you know, a lucky penny. Now, was she solo? Did she have she team had practitioners? With her, she, she she said some pretty interesting things. She said she's like, 
they were getting so busy they needed to grow or they needed to break apart. Right. Like in other words, so the one practice when you say, you know, go over to like, say if Mark's one practice and you're one practice, yeah. it, they had to say, okay, he's there and you're there. Right. And, and kind of divide and conquer. Right. And they still be partners, but just not enough room to see the patients. Yeah. Or invest in themselves, take a risk on themselves and open a bigger clinic and serve more people in the same space during the day. Got it. Of course, I encouraged him to do that. I said, if it makes sense with the cost, you know, that might be the way to go, right? Slow growth. But, um, you know, with regards to circling back to, to my son, and she, you know, she, it made sense to her when I said, you know, when no one's watching or when he's in the really more so, it doesn't care when someone, no one's watching, but when he's in the right headset, he's running, throwing, catching, hitting, taking extra bases, all because of where his brain is. When his brain's not there and he's second guessing himself, now, all of a sudden, you went from, you know, even David Goggins said this in the morning, he could either wake up the 300-pound fat guy that had to drop 120 pounds before he got into the Navy program that he wanted to get into to be ultimately become a SEAL, or the 182, you know, 6 8% body fat, hard as nails, tough as nails, MFR. Yeah. That's the toughest man in the world kind of MO. And, you know, I think everybody has to have that. And that was the message that I gave her. I said, you know, hearing you and the... And the second guessing and the doubt, you know, I would struggle. If you walk in the room to me as a healthcare provider, I want your absolute best. Yeah. I want you to say with such conviction that, you know, I'd rather say you can't afford it, but I believe whatever you're saying, you must believe in it because I'm amazed with the level of energy you're delivering that. Right. right? And she actually started to get emotional you know, in that moment. And she had a few minutes, you know, again, it's continuing education seminar, right? So she had to go somewhere. I probably had about five more minutes with her. And in that time, you know, I believe her name was Emily. I was like, Dr. M, I said, uh, if you don't mind, I said, we're, I said, we're, we're family ready, right? I said, Dr. M, I said, the biggest takeaway is, you know, I flashed on my iPad or the, you know, the MacBook, whatever I had about the benefits of the class four laser. And, you know, she was talking about the analgesic effects. I said, is that your one trick pony? I said, well, here's 15 more things to talk about it. I said, how many people in your team? I have a CA that does sales. I, have da -da -da -da. I said, awesome. So on Monday when you get back, bring a huddle. Screenshot this to your phone. Tell them that you're going to run, you know, a program with the laser for the next four <clears> weeks. <throat> Put on the whiteboard. Talk to them about the benefits. Talk to them about where they can find it as far as where it's mentioned by a medical, you know, testing you know, center or organization right. like a National Institute of Health or something like that. Yeah. That's endorsing it and saying the medical e effectiveness, right? And gave her all these ideas. And literally, you know, if the desk wasn't as big as it was, I would have a chest bump and a high five. She gives me a double high five. And AJ and Josh were absolutely like, this is it. This is what we have to do. If we can capture that in small groups, which <laughs> then spawned into us saying, hey, listen, right. I realize there's a need. All these companies that sell do a great job, and that's their job. That's they have vertical. amazing product. They have amazing product, but the customer support in their mind is for repairs, not using the product. And that's what they do. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. That's yeah. what you do, right? You provide it and you service it. Right. Understood. Yeah. Where we come in, you know, is- Seal Team 6. Yeah. We're going to come in and show them exactly how to use it, how to monetize it, yeah. you know? And again, when we say monetize it, you know- it's the practice of healthcare. We're not trying to rob the patient. Right. We're charging what's a you know a fair and reasonable rate for a service that gets an amazing outcome. And when you start there, you know, in the education process, I feel like the patient <clears throat> is so appreciative as as opposed to where you're rushing them and going through. Because that was yeah. a big thing that I found was if I spoke to 400 doctors and we talked about intakes in the first process. And sometimes people say this is boring, but I don't care whether it's a server coming up and, you know, they're Doesn't all over matter. the place and not telling you, you know, if you're so laser focused within the first couple minutes with that, with the patient, when they're really a consumer at that point, you don't know if they're coming. They might not know hundred percent they're coming. Right. But when you take that information and you, and you let them know this information is priceless yep. and so imperative that we get it exact. Cuts your exam time down by 25 minutes. hundred percent. 
And it allows the doctor to get right to the problem. Yep. And when it gets to a patient education, especially like in our system, where they're giving you more education, they're shedding even more sunlight on, you know, hey, these are your pain points. These are the modalities and how they could benefit you. And this is what we want to do. So I have to tell you, you know, that part of the experience with the seminar was absolutely fantastic. Right. And Doc, I want to get into, you know, growth as not only as Dr. John O'Connor with Velocity HP Coaching, but as a speaker, we're not even six full months into Velocity HP and you going to the Parker seminar, comparing how you speak with doctors now to how you did just six months ago back in September of last year, you know, how would you explain to everybody your growth in that sense comparing to speaking on how to implement the systems of the laser and shockwave on patients and how to make money in a practice? Yeah, you know, it's the system. Making money is the byproduct of a great system. Right. And if your systems are in place and the patient is educated, the consumer is educated, then they welcome you. They allow you to partake in their healthcare. You are blessed and honored to be able to treat them, to get them where they want to go. Six months ago, I didn't have that confidence or language. I think always as a practitioner, basketball trainer, anything that I've done as a job, it was always <clears throat> effort. Right. I would out grind you, out work you, out hustle you, out whatever it took to give the best product. Right. Now, I believe the confidence in the results and the communication. And, and I have to say, I'm blessed. I mean, the podcast, and, and I've said this to many of the companies that are interviewing us, bringing us in as brand right. ambassadors, is creating a level of confidence yeah. that I know that I can speak about a product and, and ascertain information about a person through the steps in the systems that we create that I can create a plan for them that is going to get them a measurable result and an outcome that they desire, right? Right, And we could apply that to say, we could do that for the healthcare provider to get them the results that they want to use a machine and monetize it. Or I could flip <laughs> around and be Dr. O'Connor in a clinical setting, treating somebody and getting them over the hump in a physical hardship in a, you know, in a debilitated state. And I think that, I think that's a big thing, you know, and we talk about it all the time, you know, I think one of the other things that we're learning the importance of is follow-up. When we give people the gift of respect of their time, shooting them a text, an email, a call, saying, hey, I, enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed working with you today. Uh, if you have any questions about what we provided, the service we provided, please don't hesitate to give us a call. The patients take that and appreciate that on an entirely different yeah. level. And, you know... And a lot of times, much like the name of this podcast, Tough Love, I mean, I'm pretty abrupt when people aren't getting better, but they keep going back to the triggers that keep hurting them. Yeah. Right? And so I think that that's a, I think that that's a big issue. Absolutely. You know? No, and even just back in September, we were still trying to master the system in our own home at Velocity, you know, and I feel we've came a long way, especially you just representing Velocity HP with the growth of everything, speaking with doctors, and that's what gives us more opportunity. I mean, you just got invited down to Florida in late March for the Shockwave Convention to speak for one of the biggest multi-million dollar companies that created Shockwave. Well, actually, to elaborate on that, we're learning more about that, how it's going. We're speaking on behalf of all of them. We're, that, that accreditation, or certification rather, is a competency proficiency on utilizing the device. So all the big players in the market are stepping up. So look at it like for me as a sneakerhead, that would be Alo, Nike, yeah. you know, Adidas, New Balance, whatever, whatever the case may be, you know, and we're representing the machine, the technology and the results. Yeah. And these are professors and PhD and university, you know, instructors. And when we got invited to be the co-sponsor for the event with Softwave Technology, I, I was blown away. You know, I was so thankful for Dr. John Fernandez to say, he goes, I've never seen anybody teach to where you're teaching the patient about it and the benefits. 
And then, you know, you have another layer of your, of your healthcare system come in. And after you've prescribed wherever the plan is, then they explain it and they explain the cost. And then basically they welcome the system into the treatment mod module, if you will. Yeah. And, and the best part is the patient already knows about it before even stepping foot into the office. A hundred percent. And that's huge, right? That's huge. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's what creates success, I think, with them because to us, education is key. So coaching them up on what the science is prior to coming in, that's everything. And I know I just watched uh, Air with Michael Jordan. So <laughs> what you're going through with the Shockwave, Laser, uh, Local Cryo, with these companies, it's almost like Jordan going through Nike, Converse, Adidas. You know, they're going back and forth seeing which company is the best fit for him and them going at him to represent their product. Right. Absolutely. Listen, you know, I'll jump, I'll jump clothing lines. Right. But you know, being sarcastic, I love me some aloe, alo, right. And you know, it's one of my favorite brands to wear, but interviewing Mo from athletic freak and Noor, I realized that that's a, uh, a homegrown mom and pop brand right. that we're watching that is luxury sports, you know, fitness wear that could be the next it. Yeah. And I'm not even going to say and compare them to anybody else because they're one of one. Right. And I think Mo will appreciate that because he doesn't want to be compared to anybody. He wants to be his own athletic freak. And, you know, and I love that about them. But I think the genuine thing that we loved and we just found this, you know, found this out was, you know, in our podcast, right? And we've, we've, got, a, we've got a good amount of them out there now. In all the companies we worked with, we didn't have to ask them. And the uh, the trucker hat that I worked at, worked out in, I think I just had it out in the Parker seminar. You know, he's giving any of the viewers that that you know hashtag tough yeah. love, and I guess you know however they follow the code, right. we'll get a free hat. Yeah. And to me, you have to give to get, right? So going back to the very beginning of the why of this show, you know, I went out to Vegas with, you know. As a sports trainer, former athlete, and again, now I'm a business athlete, right? Yeah. Everything's a competition. Where I'm going, I'm not going to be average. I want to be the MVP. I want to be the baddest mofo in the room. I want to, I want to deliver. I want to conquer. That's it. Yeah. Right? There's nothing else that goes through my yeah. mind. When I was there, all I was thinking about was, hey, this is really expensive, you know, and is this going to go? And then hearing, you know, MedRay kind of bouncing around with stuff, we know how much we invest. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, Clean Media does a fantastic job with our stuff putting it out there. You know, we have picked our core four technologies and our our cornerstone, our pillar, if you will, is MedRay, right? And then right behind them is Cryoscience and then the other, the other two products. Yeah. And the one thing that I would say is you must be so consistent and razor sharp in how you frame that package it put it out there right and you know i give all props to sean the owner of clean media because now we're seeing it now we're looking at finished products where um we had a monster of a you know instagram business coach at like 10.1 million followers yeah uh come out and comment and say hey great stuff keep it going and it only takes one and that was special you know that's like being a like for me as a basketball player you know, I'll never forget it. Uh, you know, one of the guys that ran, you know, Poconos and Five Stars, one of the one of the family owners played, I think, basketball at Princeton, and I could jump out of the gym, right? So, at the time, I think we were at Monmouth University, or he saw me jump at at Poconos up in the uh, up in the up in you know Pocono Mountains, and I would touch the side of the backboard and then just smash into the front of the rim, and people would be like, "Wait a minute, do that again." So I would tap the side of the backboard and then float all the way out and just smash one off uh -huh. the front of the rim. They're like, "That's wild," right? And, but the story was, you got to put it out there. When we're at these events, how do we be, how do we great? Yeah. And it's that communication. And I think, like to, you know, going back to your question is just, you're going to grow from that. Whatever that confidence was, I could jump. Well, now I can speak about something that I'm seeing patient testimonials. And one of the, you know, I'm seeing the results. We're getting the outcomes and we're putting them out there because, you know, we're blessed again, like I said, because we work hard at it, right? Clean media, we, we show them what we want. We, we show them the message that we're trying to get out there. They frame it and put it out there. 
Right. And, you know, and I think that's a huge, huge hook, you know. No, 100%. And that's, you know, we could talk about growth all day. I feel like we should save this for another day talking about growth. But to put perspective on it, we went from 1,500 to about 20,000 followers in the past 60 days. So it's getting out there. Your message is getting out there. Our message is out there. And the biggest thing is believing in that and believing in the process of what we're trying to do coaching up practices, coaching up doctors, and you being the solo speaker. Um, it's just a you got to believe in what you believe in. That's what creates success. A thousand percent. And, you know, probably closing out the last couple minutes of this podcast today, it was communication. I know with, a, uh, you know, our first few clients that we're working with, I think they struggle to understand the importance of communication. And what do I mean with that? How important it is that your coordinator, your lead coordinator gets as much relevant information to what's going on with that patient. Because when they're calling at that point, again, I'm a customer, I'm they're, a client. They're the most important person on the team. Yes. And when your people at the top undervalue that, you're destined to fail. Yeah. And that was the one thing that kept resonating me, at, you know, down at Parker this year or out West rather was... So many of these practitioners are like, you know, I, I asked somebody, you know, how many do you see a day? Somebody would be like, well, I see 60. You know, the guys out west, well, I see 120. I'm like, hmm, all right, impressive. Yeah. And, you know, then the funny thing about it was, and these guys were great guys. You know, I love that Southern brings me back to Georgia, you know. You got the and, hard Northeast doctors, then you got the Midwest who <laughs> yeah, are teddy bears. Yeah. And, and these guys are great. You know, yeah. they're, they're like, see 120. And I said, well, Doc, think about it this way. At 120 patients coming in a day, just do the math on that. How many patients you got to see an hour? They're like, you know, we just adjust. Yeah. Right. Understood. I said, but you're in front of me right now because you're talking about pain points and you're, you're in these cap plans and you want to make more money. But honestly, you must just be meeting these people and going right to it to be able to literally see 120 people a day. And they're like, yes, I, I have no idea who they are until I walk in the room and somebody's taking a, you know, a, a, a right. generated note, et cetera. And I said, well, think about it this way. If you could use an artificial intelligence or an intake system that asked a few more questions, that instead, if you ask the patients, and if I came in and asked those 120 patients that are going to a podiatrist for shockwave on their foot, or they're going to the PT for their elbow therapy, this and that, and you offered it and you had this modality and just from an intake system that you could treat them, not only are you giving your patients more balanced and comprehensive care, but if you could charge for that outside that, you know, outside the realm you're there. You're getting paid to do something in a service. And now if I'm the patient at that point, really I'm the consumer, I'm going to say, you know what, Dr. Matt or Dr. Sean or Dr. John, Dr. O'Connor, you know, whatever that physician is so caring and so thorough and literally just goes through everything and, and like looks like they're studying a blueprint to make sure they have missed anything. And I think when you do that, you, that's when you're ultimately, no matter what it is, whether it's business, healthcare there, you're going to level up. It's what makes patients stay. Yeah, absolutely. So... Anyway, listen, you know, today's podcast for me talking about Vegas and talking about the investment of time and the hours there, it was an absolute success. We came away with being, again, the lead sponsor for an international event for certifying, you know, shockwave providers. We came away with being invited to one of the largest chiropractic and physical therapy uh, equipment, you know, and providers the world. <laughs> in the world, right? And the relationship that we came away with after we broke bread that, that night um, with the MedRay you know, laser and technology company, we realized that, you know, and God rest his soul, the doctor that we met that got us in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and he passed six weeks prior, right after they wrote the big check, he passed away. What we didn't know when we were sitting there eating dinner was, this was a man that created his relationships like how politics used to be, that we made a deal with a handshake and that when he would show up, that everybody knew him, but he had nothing written down. Yeah. Although, you know, AJ is, both of them are remarkably intelligent. Again, attorneys, you know, yeah. accomplished. Right. You know, the funny thing they both said was that, you know, he came across very, kind, not simple in a, in a bad way, but just genuine. And they both said how sharp he was uh -huh. and never confused the two. Right. 
that he knew exactly and strategically who he was getting at to get his devices out there. Yeah. And that he said, I'm okay with not having the $50,000 laser. I'll have the fifteen to $18,000 laser. I don't need to be the richest. I'll move them all day long. I'll never have an overstock of inventory. And I'm going to be very happy. Yeah. And those guys picked it up right where, you know, right where he left off. Yeah. And they're running with it. And that's what he was. Dr. Gary, every time I talked to the guy, it was like we were best buds in the same room. He you was know, rest the, his soul. The, the stories were adorable. You know, they were saying that he was a big, like, you know, 24 karat gold watch and jewelry guy. Yeah. He like he was like either a pro wrestler or a former NFL right, player. Right, right, right. And, you know, and he was out, in, you know, wherever he, you know, where he came from yeah. in like some, you know, rural part of the country. And, you know, but he was like a one percenter. Like yep. he was all in. He knew he his knew. products. Yeah. And, you know, and when they studied the company and did their due diligence, they couldn't believe as relaxed and how it seemed like he wasn't having his stuff all together. Yeah. How absolutely pristine the operation was behind yep. Med Ray and, you know, and their technology. Company. Absolutely. So awesome. Anyway, listen. Thank you so much for today. Super enjoyed it. You know, definitely, definitely a little jet lagged. You know, it was a very long trip. You know, the one thing when you go as a student or a doctor getting your, your continuing credits, you're there and you get some breaks. When you're there and you're on and you're communicating, you're just pouring that energy into people. I give those national independent sales reps and all those people that work at all those companies so much credit because it is so exhausting mentally, physically. You know, I, would, I could work out yeah, a little yeah. bit long. But mentally, like to just share those stories, it was a lot. You know, and I say so. The jet leg is worth it. Yeah, without a doubt. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining today, us today. Today was all about growth. And you know what? You're not always going to see, you know, crazy dollars and cents with every event or every business you do. But sometimes it's about the long game and not the short money. And that you have to literally invest in yourself and invest in the relationships to really grow and prosper. And I think what we did this weekend was something that we'll look back in three to five years and say, Wow, we've created something huge and it started here. Thank you so much. So anyway, thank you so much for following us today. Follow us on our platform. If you find a great value in this message, please share it. We'll look forward to seeing you guys soon. Take care.